Welcome to The Hump. Today's topic, nightmares. Let's welcome our panel, the No Nightmare Meg. Smoothie. The Low Nightmare Sophie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Jace. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're worst. <laughs> well, before we begin, let's check out today's news. With the average Australian paid $1,499 a week, crew pay is not keeping up. The Live Entertainment Technical Production Conference in Johannesburg heard from me about Australia's Live Production Award and delegates were quite startled to see that the award provides for roughly one half of the average adult wage for highly skilled positions such as level four technicians and indeed a production manager under our award is paid under $800 a week. The situation's paralleled in Germany where crew pay has been essentially stalled since the year 2000. I think we need to do better. Okay, so today on The Hump, we're talking nightmares. I don't know if I've ever brought this up on the show before, but there was the time I was almost crushed by the State Theatre stage in Melbourne. Um, now, I don't know wow. if you know, it's actually two stages at the State Theatre. They can actually swap them over. It's a gigantic sort of hydraulic system where basically the whole thing picks up, moves, and then drops down. Now, I was bumping out after a production that had a lot of flamenco dancing, and, you know, they tap dance on the floor a lot. So we had all these boundary, uh, contact marks underneath, underneath the stage. Yeah. So me and, and uh, uh, a co-worker were underneath the stage oh when gosh. we heard the beep, 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 and the whole thing started moving. We were in a crawl space underneath it, and we were going to get crushed. Oh, oh wow. We moved so fast. Oh, uh, claustrophobic, man. And came out <laughs> running and yelling um, obscenities at the person controlling the stage lift. And there like was a, a couple of rats rest. out of a drain pipe. Yeah. A no one Butted checks. ferret in a wind tunnel, as yeah. some people would say. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was a bit of a nightmare. That um, is a nightmare. Yeah, but, you know, we both escaped unscathed and there was um, a major investigation the next day. So, but I, I was always very, very careful about stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, but I was very young at the time and hadn't thought to like, you know, mention that we were going to be down there because I'd never actually seen the thing move before. Yeah, right. I, I'd kind of I remember vaguely being told that it could, but I, I'd never actually seen it done. Should be right. Yeah. <laughs> Any other nightmares people would catch? Well, I, I had a real one sitting on the back of an orchestra lift, patching um, XLRs and suddenly realised I was moving. Yeah. And just got my legs out of there before the lip of the concrete yeah, stage. Those arrived. things are dangerous if you're not. Moving I would have lost. Stages? I'd be. Yeah. I'd be in a wheelchair now. Yeah. I'd be wow. very cranky. Yeah. Cranky. I'd still be cranky. I'd be more cranky. Oh, gosh, mm. I don't think that's possible. I've fortunately I haven't had anything like that happen to mm. me. But as a singer, it didn't matter how many times I performed a song, I had this fear that I was going to forget the words. Did you? Think yeah. Poppy too. Did you ever do? It? No, I never forgot the words, but I would always have my music with me, just in case. Never looked at the lyrics or anything. Mm. As soon as the music comes there, you just remember, Yeah, right? it's just fine, but mm. I just had this... You never forgot the words either? No, I think, I think my worst nightmare, it happened to me. It was when I was stage managing one of my first gigs. It was at a small setting. And so my singers were all up, tracks were rolling, and then there was a total blackout. Like, everything just oh, went dead. Wow. And this was with a younger audience, so like 12, 13. And I'm like, okay, what do we do? Anyway, the performer, she kept singing and it made it the most amazing performance mm. anyway. Because it was... It's good when they do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It made it an amazing, it was mm. intimate. It I was, love it. I love it when um, performers seize the initiative and just mm. keep going. Oh, mm. Push for it. it turned it into a winning performance. Yeah. But that was, yeah, that was like a nightmare oh that gosh. came true. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Nightmares. There's a few in yeah. the industry. Yeah. I, I have an actual recurring nightmare. Like more of an anxiety dream, really. That I'm I'm back working at the same state theatre. It's not the stage thing, but like an opera's about to start, and my entire orchestra mic, like all 24 orchestra mics or whatever I had down there, have all just stopped working, and I have to run down oh. into yeah. the pit and get it all working. I have it every now and again. Yeah. Usually when I'm worried about something else. Uh. But yeah, it's like there's a show about to start, 
and something's very, very, very wrong, and it's your problem. Yeah, yeah. I've had that. I've had a similar because mm. I've had I've had a show fail mm. because where, of you, where there was no audio mm. and oh. Full House, and it was my error. I, oh I was an un, unfamiliar console. I actually had a, a mute on the output, oh, and yeah, I wasn't good. together enough to yeah. figure it. It took me. It took me about thirty seconds. That's oh. very, oh, very. Oh, that's, that's a long, long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that still wakes me up now, 30 years later. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I think my nightmare would be they push me on stage to do a solo, no music, a cappella in front of thousands. Yeah, okay. That, oh. That would be scary. Oh, I'd hate it. Some people love that. <laughs> what would the song be? Uh, Something really hard. Yeah, some, something like a Tina Turner song, you know. Oh. Where, where you just have to... Mariah Carey. <laughs> Tina yeah. Turner. Mariah Carey. Yeah. Yeah. Where you have to notes. go hard. That's a yeah. nightmare in itself. You know what? We want to hear yeah. from you. I'm assuming everybody in the industry has these anxiety dreams, so email them to us here. We want to, we want to hear about your mm. nightmares. And we'll read okay. them out next month. We will. We'll be back after this. Metallica being from the Bay Area, especially myself, like to hook up with people who are local. Needing a smaller wedge for travel reasons, still keeping the same sonics of the giant Metallica sound was a challenge, but not for Meyer, it seems. Very pleased with uh, you know, the duties of guitar and vocals uh, coming through the same wedges, needing to have clarity in both, and this is, this is what happens with Meyer, so. Extron Electronics is shipping the CCI Pro 700, a control system user interface optimized for conferencing, collaboration and AV control. The CCI Pro 700 supports many of the critical functions needed in a conferencing environment while providing a powerful and intuitive room control user interface. The compact design includes a 3.5 inch color information display, a numeric keypad and backlit buttons. The information display can be used to show contact information, call directories and call status. Buttons directly below the display can be used to navigate custom lists and menus. Now, welcome back. Now, we're talking about online reviews. Now, we are here at CX in the business of online reviews of equipment that we do on our Gearbox program. Um, but one of the things about them is they're really influencing people away from being brand loyal to then having less loyalty. And Meg, you've just recently had experience with a with an iconic brand, and you've you've gone away from I've it. I've gone away. Yeah, I um, I'm a grown up. I mm -hmm. bought my first lawnmower on the That's weekend, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was looking to buy something uh, like a brand that I thought was one for me. And then I went online just to check it all out, and a brand that I'd never heard of before. I ended up buying because mm. it had better reviews. Um, I had the specifications of one and two, and I ended up going with this unknown brand. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, mm. yeah, but what about, what about, what about this is trusted and it's mm. X, mm. Y, and Z. Um, but yeah, like I'll never use the down thing, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But um, <laughs> oh, you mean you, your sons are going to have to use it? No, he was asleep still, so mm. um, that's why I have a squeeze. Yeah. So oh, yes, the so squeeze, the is squeeze gonna is going to do it. So yeah. exactly. Does he know this yet? Yeah, he's done it. <laughs> he does now. And he cooked dinner as well. Oh. He's a keeper. Anyway, back wow. to the topic. Cool. So the thing is. We went on holidays and the places we stayed, the places we ate were mm. all on based on um, TripAdvisor. Mm. He mowed your lawn and then he cooked dinner. Yes. <laughs> wow. Julius is having a bit of a hard okay. time getting so past that. So we're not married, so this is why it happens. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, can you get back to topic? <laughs> so, my point is though, I'll, because of these online reviews, mm. I sort of trusted what I read. 
But I also hear that there could be like a competitor mm -hmm. that's all a bit antsy and, and goes to the opposition and goes, no, this sucked, or et cetera. Mm -hmm. Fake mm -hmm. reviews. Fake mm -hmm. reviews. So what are your thoughts? Have you chosen mm -hmm. something? I, mean, I know that this is what CX does. What, mm. what do you think? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's amazing how much power everybody wields now. Like yeah. ordinary people, ordinary consumers. Peer reviews. People, peer reviews. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, peer reviews always really run our industry, really. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the lighting people, the audio people, the stage people, word gets around about yeah. a product. You know, everybody adopts it. Everybody speaks good or ill of it. Though, you know, we, we either get a lot of love or a lot of hate for yeah. some of the things that we say mm -hmm. in our yeah. reviews because yeah. it's taken very, very seriously. Yeah. Especially, you know, there's a lot of money involved. And I think when you're someone going online, like going on TripAdvisor or whatever, I mean, do you really think much about what, whose income you're affecting? Yeah. I mean, you've, you've written a few great ones, do you, Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 2000. But it's weighted, though, because it, mm. I, write, I write way more good reviews than bad ones. Mm. Mm. That's nice. For most people man. get online that's to write reality. bad ones. That's yeah. reality. And that way, my reviews carry more weight because they're real. Mm. That's good if you're writing good reviews, Julius. Mm. I yeah, like that. Good. I write a lot more bad ones when I get mm. fired up about something. It's how much time you got because no. I'm a writer. <laughs> I, I mean, think, I'm yeah. a prolific writer, so I'll do it. Yeah. 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 I think psychologically, people are more likely to complain than praise. Yeah. Mm. And that's that's we get we get 98 percent complaints here at CX <laughs> and two percent <laughs> praise, which we frame and print out and put on the wall. We love them. We love them. Much. I've got a filing cabinet. For them. <laughs> Some of them are awesome. But I awesome. Think, I think in this, it's 2016, and it's changed in the world of advertising in that mm. products to review maybe they'll go to social media you know someone with two mm. million five million followers if mm. they can get a, a good review an authentic mm. review from a real person mm. they're going to pay to have that review same with if someone talks down a product on Facebook mm. and they've got billions of fans yep. then they're going to well, we're, we're now talking about product influencers yeah. mm. which is a full time job for people that yeah. have oh. enough followers yes totally, totally. now um, speaking of which we're going to look at Gearbox right now which we can actually assure everybody that we were not paid to do so <laughs> but you know if you would like to pay us <laughs> but we don't get paid anyway oh. Oh. all right let's have a look let's check it out this is the viva from roby and it sits not quite at the extreme other end of the spectrum mm. but um certainly at a different different part of town yeah very much very very different um this is a 270 watt uh white led fixture so like way way smaller than uh, than the larger end of uh, Roby's range and way smaller power consumption yeah um this is one of the main uh advantages of this unit they're claiming very low power consumption indeed now it's got a lot of efficiencies going on so at uh, this has got a zoom range of uh, eight degrees to 40 degrees mm -hmm. and uh, eight degrees five meters we've got just over thirty thousand lux that's all for this week a nightmare week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's try, try Is that it? Else. Are you just going to say that? Okay. Isn't that what we say? Something like that. I don't think I'll wrap the show up ever. Dude, just okay. go like, that's it for this week. See you next time. The water. Yeah. Just say that's, one that's more little bit. That's pretty much it, yeah. yeah. That's all for this week. One more little bit. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Oh, oh I'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> that's all for this nightmare. Until next time. <laughs> See ya. That's it. Done. There we go. Do not look at camera after I